Hi, it's Cam for another video for HowToDigitalPaint.com and continuing a study series. These are studies you can do yourself and this particular part of the video I'm showing some warm up techniques. So this is at three times speed and what I'm doing is I'm putting down two dots and then trying to make a straight line between those two dots from point A to B. I'm not holding shift because the point of the exercise is to train my hand-eye coordination and not rely too much on digital aid such as the shift key to make a straight line and when you do this um, it's good to have a glide glove um, you can check out the video I made on ergonomics I think it's episode 14 something like that I'm not, not exactly sure which number but just go back through on the YouTube channel you'll find it and I explain there how to make a glide glove and also the technique I'm using which is to use my whole elbow and shoulder and draw from that rather than just use my wrist because you'll find it extremely difficult to get a straight line by just using your wrist you want to use the pivot of your shoulder and elbow to do that so with this exercise making curves and trying to go back over the curve uh, I suggest you try to do it a bit more slowly you'll be able to follow the curve easier if you do a slow um, and steady curve with your hand here just making the same sort of process but here I'm just training myself to use the rotate tool the rotate tool I believe got introduced in CS3 and what that allows you to do is to rotate the page as if you were turning turning paper so you just hold down the R key and then rotate the page and then when you let go of the R key it will go back to your brush but if you just press the R key it will switch to the rotate tool and you'll have to press B again to switch back to brush so this box um, just making some straight lines it's a bit of perspective practice as well um, with ellipses ellipses are a really, really good way for warming up as well so if you do these every day um, I'm only spe I spend about 15 minutes on them although I only just started I used to do them a lot and I realized how rusty I was with them and also noticed how helpful they are so I've made it um, a decision in my study schedule to do 15 minutes of these as warm-ups and it'll really loosen me up to the, the studies and other painting I'll need to do for work and, work and study. And it's good just to have fun, it just helps you loosen up and get into the mode of drawing. Yeah, I'm just doing some ovals and circles for the warm ups. So yeah, as I said, these are this is sped up three times, so I don't expect you to be rushing with them. I try to be um, deliberate with the marks that you make and also um, really really thinking about getting it right. So here just making some random curvy shapes and repeating the exercise of trying to follow the, the line back over. So this will really help you with your Wacom since, since you're not looking directly at your tablet. Um, you want to do what you can to train your hand-eye coordination. Another big tip is in your Wacom tablet settings in the mapping area, in the mapping section of the properties set force proportions and that way what you see on the screen will be the same proportion as what your tablet surface area is so that will further aid in in getting things um, synchronized here just doing some 
basic kind of gestures, just reminding myself of the proportions of the body. Although I make a few mistakes, but um, yeah, we can still learn from failures. We we see what we're doing wrong and think how we can correct it the next time. So now just doing some gestures. Gestures are really fun way to warm up. And I'm I'm realizing more and more again just that I need to study anatomy every day because things like not studying architecture and those sort of things every day you can get away with but I know for me about 70% of the work I do is um, human figures and if human figures look wrong then, then it just ruins your piece so because everybody's familiar with what the human body looks like so as an artist you want to be good at drawing that because if I draw a tree wrong people will just think that the trees just form that way but if I draw a human wrong, people will just think, you know, it's deformed or that I'm just, that I need more practice. So my, my basic study, study schedule is warm-ups for 15 minutes with those ellipses and things that you saw, 15 minutes of gestures, and then I do some figures from anatomy books like Hogarth and Loomis. And then 30 minutes of figures from photos, and then 30 minutes of figures from the head. Um, here I'm just doing the anatomy sketching part, which is 30 minutes. I just choose a, a part of the human body. Uh, for instance, this is just drawing arms and that section of the body. And then each different day I might do legs, I might do torso, I might do the neck area, things like that. So you're, you're having a holistic approach to how you, how you learn. And not getting too overwhelmed since we're only focusing on different areas at a time. And gradually that will all kind of mold together and all those individual trainings will come into how you draw the entire figure. Another really good way if you're trying to figure out your weaknesses is to draw a human figure from imagination and you'll notice a lot of your weak spots in it, what the things that look wrong and if the arms are really wrong or the legs or just the whole body you'll know, you'll know the areas you need to focus on because you'll get better by targeting your weaknesses. Now destroying an arm from imagination. So although I have um, a really kind of broken down schedule, sometimes I might just um, move on to something else, just sketch something else randomly just to keep my mind interested so now just pulling out a photo in order to study of I like I like photos, um, especially kind of action shots. So good examples of that would be if you get photos of volleyball or maybe kickboxing or skateboarding in particular, because I skate as well. But it's fun. it's kind of weird because I never I never do skateboarding pieces, and I kind of <laughs> when I look at these photos, I'm like. Hey, that's weird. I never, I never draw skaters, so I'll probably do that because I, I enjoy skateboarding. And you always get some really cool dynamic poses when you're doing sport shots. 
it took me this was a bit of a struggle since uh, I hadn't haven't really done a lot of observational drawing lately and one one of the main benefits of me making these tutorials is not only does it maybe help you guys with some things but um, it gets me into a routine of knowing that like if I'm going to show something how something's done I've got to get good at it myself so it motivates me and it also gets me into a daily habit. I did have this whole daily routine but I had a lot of shoulder problems and it was just so painful to to do any drawing that I I really limited to the time that I drew to just getting my work done rather than doing studies as well. But now that my shoulder's healed, um, I'm able to put back into doing like 10 to 12 hours of work a day. So spending about 3 to 4 hours on study a day. And then uh, the rest just doing, doing the work that I need to do on projects. Although you don't need to spend four hours a day, that's just my my thing. You might only spend an hour a day. Just whatever you can set a time aside for is going to be beneficial and also have goals. If if you want to paint environments and study environments, if you want to be a